Uh, Mr. Campbell, good to have you with us this morning. Thank you, Chairman Dodd, and uh, distinguished members of the committee. Uh, I'm Rick Campo, Chairman and CEO of Camden Property Trust, a publicly uh, traded apartment firm. I'm the immediate past chairman of the National Multi Housing Council, and I'm testifying today on behalf of NMHC and the, our joint legislative partner, National Apartment Association. We applaud the Senate Banking Committee for exploring alternative sources of capital to support housing. We believe covered bonds could indeed provide some degree of additional liquidity to the U.S. multifamily finance. We caution, however, that it is quite unlikely that covered bonds could provide the capacity, flexibility, or price superiority necessary um, uh, to adequately replace any of the U.S. traditional sources of multifamily mortgage credit. Uh, I'm, I am hoping to provide you with the apartment sector's perspective based on our general credit needs and to share some insights uh, into what role covered bonds could play uh, in meeting those needs. Uh, one third of apartment uh, of American households rent. Uh, about 16.7 million households live in rental apartments. Our industry depends on uh, a reliable source and sufficient capitals to meet the nation's uh, rental uh, housing demand. Currently, private mortgage lenders have left the market, uh, forcing us to rely heavily on credit insured or guaranteed by the federal government, na namely uh, FHA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. Uh, Eighty percent of the apartment loans that were issued in the first six months of 2010 have some for form of government credit behind them. Uh, therefore, our concerns over the, 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 are over the broader issue of housing finance reform and the unintended consequences that could reduce credit uh, now provided by the GSEs. Since the conservatorship, the latest data shows that Freddie Mac's multifamily unit has generated a billion dollars of profits uh, that have been used to offset the losses on their single-family book. Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae's uh, numbers are similar. This is a strong indicator that the uh, model for the multifamily finance market works pretty well. Uh, we support a careful look at covered bonds as a supplemental source of credit. The European experience indicates that covered bonds provide numerous benefits to issuers uh, and investors. Investors earn attractive risk-adjusted yields on low-risk diversified securities. Financial institutions that issue the bonds benefit from a lower cost of funds and reduced risk-based capital requirements along with meaning meaningful collateral substitution capabilities. For numerous, numerous reasons, though, it's quite unlikely that covered bonds could provide the capacity, flexibility, and pricing superiority necessary to, to adequately, adequately replace the U.S. existing source of multifamily credit. First, it's unclear whether covered bonds would actually increase the amount of credit uh, banks would make available to apartment firms because the covered bond structure limits the, insure, uh, the issuer's lending volumes by requiring them to hold loans on their balance sheet and retain capital reserves in case of losses. It's also possible that banks could simply replace some of the whole loan activities with covered bonds, which would not increase lending capacity. Even then, however, banks are anticipated to be more uh, uh, to be major covered uh, bond issuers may choose not to issue covered bonds for multifamily mortgages because they already originate such mortgages uh, for the GSE and CMBS market uh, and avoid any balance sheet liability. Uh, additionally, since so many asset classes qualify for covered bonds, uh, it's unclear whether the banks would use them to increase multifamily lending. It's also important to understand that the European experience with covered bonds for more multifamily properties may not be transferable to the U.S. In Europe, the rental markets operate on a condominium model comprised of small investors buying individual units and renting them out. For instance, in the U.K., 73% of the rental stock is owned by mom-and-pop operators, and there's no institutional investors. Likewise, questions remain about whether pure, uh, a purely private American covered bond market could be a critical backstop capital during uh, periods of financial instability. Europe's covered bond market came to a standstill during the global financial crisis, uh, going dormant for several months after Lehman Brothers collapsed. Some European jurisdictions have still, have, have still seen no issuance. In contrast, in the U.S., Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac continue to provide liquidity to the multifamily sector at a profit. For all these reasons, uh, we can only conclude that the covered bond market augment but would not adequately replace any of the components of the U.S. multifamily finance. Apartments are a critical component of our nation's housing market, and the apartment industry depends on a reliable, reasonably priced, and readily available supply of credit to meet the nation's growing demand for rental housing. We look forward to the return of credit liquidity from all sources, including covered bonds, and welcome your efforts to increase the credit liquidity in the future. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions.